Right, this evening's video is uh, to repair this uh, Pioneer A400 on the bench. Um, as you know, that I've rebuilt the, uh, repaired the volume control on it, that was faulty. Um, and also for the purpose of this video this evening is to uh, test out this new video camera I'm using, which is a uh, Mobius um, camera. And you can find them on the internet, they're like a little um, spy camera. Um, it's got excellent optical quality and hopefully it will give you a better um, idea of what's going on. It'll give you a wider field of view and that means I can use both my hands, which is a, a really good plus point. So, um, the, as I say, I've, I've repaired the volume control on this, um, but the problem now is there is distortion in one channel. Um, it's audible, but what I'm going to do is show you also that it's got a high DC offset. Okay. This is quite nice as well because you can see what's going on here. Um, okay, that's the audio coming in from. Where is that coming from? That's my audio supply. Okay, it's bare connection there, so let's get that sorted out. That's an earth loop maybe. These amplifiers are very prone to earth loops. Um, let's take it off the isolation transform and put it back on the non-isolation transformer there we go yeah very prone to earth loops these are uh, a400s i've always found this to be a problem so what i'm doing is i'm just going to look at the uh dc offset on the output just one channel and you see that's 200 millivolts on the uh adjutant there and on the other channel two millivolts which is absolutely fine so the right hand channel or this channel here has got a uh, high dc offset so what i'm going to do is um I've found out which transistor is faulty, and it's, uh, where are we? This transistor here, I think. I'll check it before I uh, confirm, but you can see this transistor here's um, got a collector emitter short. What I'll do is I'm going to feed a signal in. Um, we'll see if we can see the distortion on the uh, output. Full 10 millivolts. I should have both channels working, which we have, and I can actually hear the distortion. That you might not be able to hear it with the camera, but um, clearly hear the distortion on there. So let's just tap out the back of the speaker terminals. Let's get a good connection. Sometimes get connections are very good on the back of this. Let's get some other leads, extend the leads out a bit. Okay. Not using the dummy lows tonight, there's no point. I'm not testing it for power or anything at the moment. All I'm interested in is how high the distortion is and what results we get, what improvements we get on. Let's ground the outputs of the generator, that's correct. Okay. So we're going high. Should be getting something. What's going on here? High out. Whoa! That's what happens when you uh, don't use an isolation transform. You see what happened there? Because the output of the amplifier is floating, I've stuck the full DC voltage from the amplifier into the ground connection so you really should really use an isolation transformer but because I say this amplifier is such a problematic with an isolation transformer I don't really want to do that so I'm going to unpower the unit reconnect it retry again and I'm going to float the inputs of this as well that might work okay distortion 0.4% on that channel No, that's the left channel that's the good channel there's 1.8 volts distortion is quite one percent at the moment it should be less than that Let's ground these now i'm not there we go so 0.07 percent something like that then we go to the other channel i'm 
And you should find that this distortion is much higher. There you go, 1.15%. One you can, I can actually hear that distortion. That's noticeably different. So first thing we want to do, and actually also on this uh, generator, you can measure the DC offset which should show the DC level that's showing 200 millivolts. So that's, yeah, it's well too high. So the first thing we'll do is we'll replace that transistor. And that transistor is, just check with the uh, fluke. There you go, collector emitter short on this transistor here. So let's get that out. Try and work out which set of legs it is. It looks like around here somewhere. It's tricky to find out which legs you're soldering. Oh, I've got them. Light in here, really. <sighs> okay, so pull these out carefully without putting the placing through holes out. They are placing through holes, of course. It's been a bit awkward. So you saw that with some braid. Okay, there's the transistor. Twist, so it's a twist C2705. Hopefully, it's the correct one I bought. Put it for short. Yep, so that transistor's dead. And here's my replacement. To C2705. Good, so. That back in. I, I like to keep the. Uh, I mean, you can use equivalent transistors, but um, uh, particularly on stereo amplifiers and, and particularly good stereo amplifiers, I always like to try and keep the match a pair matched. You know, I like to keep make sure that it's uh, it's got the right transistor in it. There we go. That's going through there. <laughs> Checking the state of the plate through holes. Get a torch on there so you can see a bit clearer. Okay, see what's happened here. These I pushed the plate through holes, the, the 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 track through. Just give that a push back down again. Give it a clean up the solder. We can always repair this track, but the trouble is these tracks are very fragile on this amplifier. And what's more, the solder seems to have got a bit brittle with age. It tends to go a bit hard with with heat. So, um, transistor back in again. Where we went. Good. So solder that up. Unfortunately, I've got no idea how this video is coming out because I've got no feedback from the camera. Um, I can't. It hasn't got a viewfinder on it, so I'm just relying on this being a, roughly the right angle. It's a very wide field of view, so it should be able to see quite a lot. Hopefully, I'm hoping. Pull these back in. A bit more light subject. Now we've got a nice solder bridge. 
Not the right. Flowing very well, these joints. Okay, that looks all right. Let's have a look at the magnifier. Seems to be okay. All right, next step is to uh, power the amplifier up and see if it works, I suppose. Straight away I can't hear the distortion, that's a good sign. So the next step to do is to uh, check the DC offset, make sure that's uh, dropped back to a sensible level. So you saw here, it should be about 20, 25 millivolts, that's fine. And the other channel should be about the same. That's fine. So we clear the offset. And you can always tell, as I say with before, with the offset, if you uh, clip the relay in and out for the speakers, there's no... Um, there's no um, DC, there's no click from the speakers. So that should be absolutely fine now. So the amplifier's been repaired. All I've got to do is get underneath, clean that joint up with some a bit of um, isopropanol to remove the, uh, the flax. You don't have to do that. Trim the legs down, check the connections. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll uh, do a power analyze, analyst test on this uh, amplifier and see if it's okay. Check for distortion under full load. And it's ready to go. Anyway, thanks for watching.